One of the things that came out of COP26 when a result of that was this painful recognition that governments aren't going to do it, that we really need private money to be flowing towards climate solutions. By one recent estimate, there's about $750 billion in private philanthropy out there and only 2% of it is going towards climate. We looked at both private investment and philanthropic grants. We had about $230 billion of private investments going into these um, solutions. How do we catalyze more? Because it's so clear that on the government side it's not working. A lot of philanthropic decisions are made one-off. That's like, find a good organization, they're doing good, give them money. If you're in philanthropy or social investing, you're not just trying to make a profit, you're trying to solve a problem, and that problem is multifaceted. Your investment in one organization, the success of it may depend on the success of another one. Your bets are not independent, like in a traditional investor, one-off investments often fail because they're part of a bigger system. Having data on the big picture view is pretty essential for like how to maximize impact. But this is really like the first time ever to have like a synthetic, fully interactive view of the entire private funding for both climate adaptation and mitigation. The coronavirus pandemic was like the trailer to the climate change movie where if the have-nots are really impacted, the haves get screwed too. And that comes through supply chain disruptions, it comes through political polarization, conflict, war, migration, all those things, and everybody gets affected by it. And there's like a lot of late stage capital going to solve a problem like renewable energy and solar power and energy storage and, and um, electric mobility, then you see the landscape of where the vast majority of this problem is not yet profitable to solve. It means that we need more philanthropic capital to solve those problems that are, that are currently not profitable to solve. Seeing this map, it's pretty clear that as a philanthropist or a social investor, putting money into electric mobility is not really adding to the momentum that's already there, so your money is better allocated to areas that don't have a market yet. Because then you can actually influence an entire market, not just an organization. What's encouraging about that is that there's actually a whole arsenal of organizations that have been working on these issues for a long time, that with a little bit of a shift, are poised to tackle a bunch of climate adaptation related causes. We still have at least 30 years of warming, and that's the best case scenario.